The Prime Minister of Hungary, Viktor Orban, has secured a fourth consecutive landslide election victory, despite a campaign in which he had to answer questions about his close links to Russia. With nearly all the votes counted, his Fidesz party had more than 53 percent of the vote, meaning it will retain its two-thirds majority in parliament. Our Europe editor, Katya Adler, is in Budapest. This is why the world watched Hungary's vote. Viktor Orban, famed for his autocratic, illiberal style of government and his very close ties to Vladimir Putin. This political opposition poster tells voters to choose a Hungarian Putin or Europe. On election day, Mr Orban again ruled out sending weapons to Ukraine, which shares a border with Hungary. This war between two big countries is right next door to us. It's dangerous. We have to stay out of it. The opposition wants to get Hungary involved. We're running to prevent that. Voters here say they hate the violence in Ukraine, but many support Viktor Orban and the cheap energy prices he's promised thanks to agreements with Russia. There is a lot of criticism from abroad, but I stand by the government. They have the right attitude towards the war in Ukraine. We Hungarians help refugees, but I agree we shouldn't allow weapons transfers. Ahead of the election, Hungary's opposition leader told us Viktor Orban was damaging his country at home and abroad. It's not too difficult to find a connection between Orban and Putin. They are doing business together and even now uh, Orban is the only one who's still defending Putin uh, in this uh, Ukrainian war. Viktor Orban has long prided himself on political pragmatism, dallying with allies east and west, treading a fine line and just about getting away with it. But the war in Ukraine changes things. Blocking weapons transfer sits very uncomfortably with the EU and NATO. Hungary is a member of both. Under Viktor Orban, it's becoming increasingly isolated. Faced with Moscow, Western allies want to present a united front. By winning Hungary's election, Viktor Orban remains an unpredictable thorn in their side. Katya Adler, BBC News, Budapest. Okay, let's speak live to our Nick Thorpe, who also joins us from Budapest. And Nick, is it fair to say the outcome of this election isn't a surprise, but the margin certainly is? That's right, yes. Even the most optimistic, from the government point of view, opinion poll before the election was suggesting they might win this by perhaps 10%. In fact, they've won it by 18%. No one really on the government side thought they would have another two-thirds majority, and they have won a two-thirds majority. And under the Hungarian constitution, which Fidesz wrote 11 years ago, that gives them almost absolute power. The opposition are, are really reduced to observers now in parliament. Uh, and Nick, uh, Katya was saying there in her piece that, that the Western world is trying to present some kind of united front in the face of this Russian aggression, especially uh, in Ukraine, obviously, at the moment. And, and, and yet Viktor Orban remains this unpredictable, isolated figure. But correct me if I'm wrong, but at the very beginning of this conflict, he actually did come out and say, look, I'm, I'm not uh, anti-Western alliances. I'm, I, I want to show that I'm also part of this, this alliance. So what shifted and changed? I wouldn't say something's changed, but he is stressing Hungarian neutrality. He points out that Hungary has been, uh, has always suffered in its wars, it's lost most of the wars it's fought, and so that went down well with the Hungarian population. He presented himself as the sort of candidate, as the peacemaker, as the uh, man who would keep Hungary out of this uh, conflict. But of course, by pushing that neutrality, uh, that goes against what, for example, Poland, traditionally Hungary's ally, has said. But um, I would agree with Katya in many senses there. What I would add, though, is Hungary is perhaps not quite as isolated as it might seem this morning with its attitude to the war, especially its attitude to sanctions. Another thing that Mr Orban has said, he doesn't want uh, any sanctions, EU sanctions, to be imposed on fuel, on oil and gas supplies. And his position on that is quite similar to that of Austria and Germany 
on the argument with the basis that really Europe would suffer enormously if it wasn't getting Russian oil and gas. And I think that's something, as he forms his new government and goes ahead in the coming weeks and months, that he will be looking for allies in Europe, other countries who feel uncomfortable on any kind of sanctions of that kind, simply because it would hurt their own economies too much. Yeah, and, and, and Nick, I, I suppose, did the war in Ukraine have a massive impact on, on how people voted or, or was top of their minds uh, things like the economy? I think the economy was the number one issue for them. Uh, real wages have increased over the past 12 years while Mr Orban's been in office. This is still a relatively poor country by European standards, but people, especially in the countryside where, uh, which voted almost unanimously for Mr Orban, people do feel that their standard of living has gone up a bit and they're afraid of the future and they're afraid, of course, of this terrible war going on in the neighbourhood. And so Mr Orban was saying, continuity, more of the same, trust the experts, we will continue to increase your standard of living. And he was also saying, I'll keep you out of the war. Of course, the real challenge facing him now, anyone who'd won this election, but now he's going to have to face a really big economic crisis. Uh, prices uh, have been capped by Mr Orban's government. Food prices until the May the 1st, fuel prices until May the 15th. So now he's going to have to explain to the public why inflation is going to increase dramatically and why he won't really be able to do much to stop that. Nick, thanks so much for that update there from uh, Budapest.